Today, in Master of Crafts, automatic turrets capable of guarding kilometers of the demarcation line, modern technological solutions that make it possible to defend oneself from the aggressor without the risk of human losses. How Ukrainian craftsmen are creating a new generation war industry. UATV visited an assembly shop of remote combat modules. Ukraine has been conducting the anti-terrorist operation for the fourth year now, which is in essence a defensive war against Russia's aggressive actions in the east of the country. The military support of Moscow allowing Russian-backed troops to test the demarcation line time and again in total disregard of the Minsk agreements was well documented by experts. While diplomats are working on resolving the conflict, the Ukrainian army is using that time for reform and rearmament. For two consecutive years, it has held 30th place in the global military power ranking compiled and based on more than 50 indicators. All that time, Ukraine was being opposed, albeit in a limited way, by the military machine of Russia, which occupies second place in the same rating. From those who collected financial aid for the army, many of them turned into professionals when it comes to military and civilian vehicles who procure everything for the needs of specific military units, from tactical medical stretchers to UAVs. Ukrainian volunteers demonstrate their achievements alongside the developments of the state defense industry at the annual exhibition Arms and Security. In 2017, 425 different companies and enterprises from 13 countries of the world participated in the exhibition. In the large exhibition hall, dozens of full-scale military vehicle models can be seen, including armored personnel carriers. However, it is quite possible that the course of war will be affected the most not by some large and easily noticeable vehicles, but by more compact and inconspicuous vehicles. Essentially, this is the future of all weapons and it's what all developed countries are engaging in today. First and foremost, it removes people from the line of fire and makes it possible to provide combat support without becoming a priority target and taking enemy fire. Volunteer Danilo Kovjun presents at the exhibition what is called an automatic turret for simplicity and in science it is called a stationary device capable of fulfilling combat tasks that are assigned to it. This module called Saber connects to a portable computer independently finds targets and offers its operator to decide whether to open fire or not. We had the idea to produce them back in 2012. We began development in 2014. First prototypes were delivered to the ATO zone as volunteer aid. This module, like a dozen more of our modules, went through its baptism of fire. This particular device stood a little over a year in the Avdiivka industrial zone. For two and a half years, this has been the zone of the fiercest battles, just a few kilometers from Donetsk, which was seized by Russian-backed troops. The Sabre turret is not just a machine gun on a stand. Ukrainian designers know that their equipment has to work in harsh conditions. Combat experience shows that modern radio-electronic warfare means which only Russia possesses are used against the armed forces of Ukraine. When they shoot at the module, they expect to hit a human machine gunner. They shoot fragmentation shells and hit the window exactly where the machine gun is installed. The machine gun continues to fire. Although it gets a bit scratched, it keeps on fire. The main goal of the creators of Ukrainian automatic turrets is to achieve the maximum coverage at zero risk for the operator. During a long defensive war, it is very important to save the lives and health of as many fighters as possible. However, the replacement of a person, like any unmanned technology, increases the cost of combat unit by a significant margin. In addition, automatic turrets usually require special training for the operator and sometimes have to be taken from the front line for repairs and maintenance. But is there really no way to reduce those disadvantages to a minimum? They asked me to come to the front to Avdiivka, so I went there, took a look at it, told them my opinion and offered the volunteers to develop a remotely controlled large-caliber turret. So that was when we started working together. 
Ну и вот начали сотрудничать. Since then, the volunteer designer Ivan Savelyev has been working on the next generation automatic turret models, and today has already agreed to show UATV the future of tomorrow of the defensive war of Ukraine. How much do the most perfect samples of modern automatic turrets cost? Which part of a modern machine gun is the most important? And will it be possible to create high-tech weapons that every soldier will be able to use? Perhaps the most famous automatic turret used in Hollywood movies is the close-in weapon system Phalanx, developed in the US for the needs of the Navy back in the late 1970s. Today it is used by 16 countries of the world. The purpose of this defense weapon is to shoot down anti-ship missile. And trusting people with aiming at quickly moving targets is pointless, as nobody has such a quick reaction. Only a computerized system is capable of this. One Phalanx costs several million dollars, depending on the model and can fire up to 4,500 rounds per minute, with each at a cost of 30 US dollars. This automatic turret is the most expensive in the world, but the goal justifies the price in this particular case. A more down-to-earth, land-based model is the American Krause, which can often be seen mounted on armored vehicles. The US Army decided long ago to not put a machine gunner behind a mounted gun, because the operator is well protected sitting inside the vehicle. Currently, there are up to 8,000 such installations in use by the U.S. Armed Forces. Krauss is a product of a high-tech military company, so for an army that wants to purchase it, the bill can be as high as hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if we attach a thermal imager and another machine gun to our turret and give two more gunners to boot, that would compensate the price of that target device, right down to the penny. Now the Ukrainian army is using every single military equipment unit sparingly. This is not because there is nothing to replace them with, but because nobody really knows how long the hybrid conflict with Russia will last. Therefore, volunteers like Ivan Savelyev have different priorities. Ukrainian designers solve a lot of technical tasks imposed by real war in the shortest possible time and as cheaply as possible. I worked as a chief designer of a plant in Kyiv for 14 years. Then the events on the Maidan began, and I took part in all of them. After that, the military operations began in the east. By that time, we had already become definitive experts on a number of issues. Ivan's main expertise is stationary machine guns. Since May 2014, he, together with other volunteers, delivered modernized guns right to the front line to Ukrainian fighters. As a result, the volunteer of goods for soldiers then went to the front as a volunteer soldier and then was mobilized and fought in fierce battles in defense of the Donetsk airport. We must increase the effectiveness of the weapons that we already have. Accordingly, Ifar, for example, make a machine gun that weighs as much as a Soviet one, but is twice as accurate, then logically the number of targets hit will be twice as high. Moreover, the added benefit of such an efficient machine gun is that the ammunition consumption will be two times lower. Those were Ivan's priorities for the modernization of the Sabre automatic turret – efficiency and convenient maintenance. How it is done. The new model of this automatic turret, which has not yet been given a name, is literally being developed in a garage in an industrial district of Kyiv, an automatic infantry turret with remote control capabilities. It consists of three main nodes, the turret itself, on which the machine gun and the targeting device are mounted, the power supply block and the connection cable. In the best American models, the power is provided by a high-capacity battery, which costs thousands of dollars. For this very reason, Ivan decided to use a reliable car battery in decent condition as the base of his turret as a less costly alternative. This allows you to charge and recharge the battery from any generator. It allows you to draw power from telephone lines that run along the front line. But accordingly, that causes great losses in voltage, because the standard output of such grids is usually around 140 to 150 volts. It is also possible to connect a thermal imaging site to this system and even charge a laptop from it. It is very important for Ivan that all technical solutions are universal if and where possible.
When we were designing it, we faced a technical task. First, to provide fairly high-precision firing. Second, the ability to fire accurately at moving targets. That is, you lead the target and the system processes it on its own through a laptop and gives the command in anticipation of an NPC of the enemy. Let us assume. These tasks were solved with the help of two separate horizontal targeting nodes. One of them homes in on the target quickly, but not very accurately, while the other one is slower but much more accurate. With all that, the weight of the whole system without a machine gun is only 40 kilograms. You just sit on the battery box, which is actually quite comfortable. This is where the screen goes. The laptop most likely goes here. There are two buttons. This is the rapid horizontal targeting. There is a switch. This is the precision horizontal targeting. It is indeed very accurate. And there is vertical targeting, that is, range adjustment. Everything can be specially configured for the convenience of the device operator. The red button is pressed to open fire. It is not possible to break the remote control panel off, as it is screwed in very tightly. This platform can house either a machine gun or an anti-tank grenade launcher. Savelyev says that he did his best to make a universal automatic turret which would be simply designed and would not require any special or rare parts. That is, it would be as easy as possible to repair and very simple for any soldier to learn how to use it. We received feedback from that side on some turrets. There is at least one video of our installation in action at a distance of 1,700 to 1,800 meters. That's quite a long distance for a large-caliber machine gun. Some soldier unfortunately looked out a window, and a stream of bullets hit the window in a perfect line. He was surprised and confused, as he didn't know what had hit. A stream of 12.7-caliber bullets hit the window with perfect accuracy, not even deviating to the left, right, up or down. So all the shots hit the spot from where the soldier had looked out. The brigade couldn't understand from where they were shot, as if it was from point-blank range. But that was not the case at all. If a machine gun is equipped with a flash suppressor and heat insulating casings, it becomes very difficult to determine the location of the all-seen turret. All that has already been tested by the Ukrainian military on conventional small arms. With at least two or three of such devices, a three-kilometer area can be closed off tightly. You can't see it. Thermal imagers can't spot it. Nothing can. The use of thermal imaging sites allows for ditching tracer rounds. That is, the position is not revealed. If it fires at you, you won't know where it fired from. You can only assume its approximate position. At the Arms and Security Exhibition of 2017, Ivan and his colleagues, among other things, demonstrated this platform and immediately attracted the attention of foreign visitors for the exhibition. The foreigners at the exhibition. It would be wrong to say that they missed a thing of what was presented there. They looked at and took photos of every single exhibit there was on display. Any war drives progress forward, if you have something up here. And when the war ends, the progress remains and continues. They strive to ensure that their developments from the time of the defensive war of Ukraine become the foundation of the future of a peaceful and prosperous country.